Welcome to KubeCon, Cloud Native Con Europe. Welcome to my session. And I'm really excited to present to you what Dynatrace can do for you around open telemetry. And some of you might find our session title for today a little bit confusing because, you know, isn't open telemetry and observability the same? Are they? Are they not? So technically, open telemetry is a framework to observability, right? And there is lots of advocacy around that. And all the people around it really think that observability is more than just, you know, the, the collection of tools um, and the standard data types, you know, lo logs, metrics, and traces. And they, they share, or, you know, the common perception here that it matters what data you collect and how you collect it and then what you do with the data, right? And here is where open telemetry comes into the play. Um, it's a way of collecting observability data, right? And uh, Dynatrace can help at both angles, collecting the data and helping to analyze it at scale. And on the left side, you can see here the Dynatrace One agent that massively automates and simplifies data collection. Um, and on the right side, uh, you know, that the brain represents Dynatrace's AI, which we call Davis. And you'll, you'll see the power of Davis a little bit later in the live demo. Um, and it helps really, you know, processing and analyzing data at scale. Now, if we look at the, the full-blown technology stack at Dynatrace here, which I'm bringing up now on the next slide, um, you know, on, on the bottom left corner, in the bottom left corner, you see that Dynatrace goes way beyond collecting traces, metrics, and logs. You know, the we collect topology information, which is a key ingredient for, for analyzing data at, at large scale. B way beyond that, looking then into user behavior data, deeply into code execution flows, um, collecting additional metadata, for, for other purposes and, and so forth. And then also being very open about that have tons of APIs to for allowing you to bring in any data you, that you want. And uh, then of course also the open telemetry standard for, for ingesting additional data into the Dynatrace ecosystem, into the Dynatrace software intelligence platform. Now, if you go uh, one level up, then those, those you know, key innovations that Dynatrace did over the last decade starting with the one agent, as said before, massively automates data collection and simplifies that, alongside with the PurePath, the most advanced tracing to talk technology for more than a decade uh, out there in the market. Smart skip topology information that allows you to have, you know, everything in context all the time, a real-time topology model of your deployments. That also is the key foundation for the Davis AI that helps, you know, to analyze the data with true cause and effect relationship. And then last but not least, doing that at enterprise scale, um, providing you, you know, with, with uh, really high, you know, high scalability and, and failover, you know, data collection and, and so forth. Now on top of it, we have six solutions tailored to very important use cases around observability. And then also the Dynatrace hard to the far right that helps you to further customize and, and, you know, extend the Dynatrace ecosystem to your needs. Now, specifically today, I want to highlight three use cases that we also replicated in the demo environment from a real, you know, um, scenario with, with one of our customers. And <clears throat> they are ingesting, automatically ingesting open telemetry spans uh, through the one agent. So whenever uh, an application or a piece of code is monitored by the one agent, Dynatrace automatically picks up uh, open telemetry uh, spans. Then metrics and span import through a open telemetry exporter and uh, you know how, uh, bringing that data into Dynatrace through that way, which is your use case number two and three. Now, those isolated and very simply looking use cases, let me bring that into a much more complex distributed application. And here we can really now demonstrate the power of Dynatrace. So let's say we have, you know, um, a little bit of a more complex situation where we have the end user to the far left, 
using a mobile application or a web browser to interact with an application here with a front end, then you know serverless components, and then a, a front end and a back end, which is not typically the case, but you, you would typically have a um, a very you know microservice based architecture these days, and then databases and others in the end. Now, if for instance your back end now loads a library that comes pre-instrumented with OpenTelemetry, or if you, uh, as developers, decide to instrument parts of your code with OpenTelemetry to capture further context, the one agent that already is there monitoring this component, this microservice or backend or frontend or whatever that is, will automatically pick those, um, you know, the, that instrumentation up and embeds it into the pure path. And we will see that in a live demo shortly. And the other scenario really is that you load, um, or you know, a, a, a container image is loaded, or a new a container spins up somewhere, um, um, and you know, when Dynatrace monitors that, as just mentioned, you will automatically get the full stack, uh, you know, information here. Um, and if you're not able to put a Dynatrace one agent there, or you don't want to. Um, you also can then ingest that data through an exporter, an open telemetry exporter into Dynatrace. And this is exactly what we're going to look at now at the live demo. <clears throat> so let me actually go over here. Uh, we can see here uh, in my front end service just a second ago, we have a lot of failed dynamic requests. So let's investigate that and uh, drill into. And I'd like to check out the elevated failure rate here. So my demo environment is a little problem here. I, I don't get uh, a load at the moment. So I'm looking at historic data from the you know past couple of days. And as you can see, there is no recent data coming in uh, because you know I don't have any load on the system right now. But we still can see there is uh, lots of failed requests coming in. And let's look uh, uh, at the details and analyze those, right? So I see a couple of product details that fail at 100% rate. Uh, but more important here is this checkout card service that also fails with 100% of occurrence. So let me drill in and analyze all these pure paths, which is essentially all those different traces um, that come in here. So I need, again, to extend my time frame here to, let's say, the last 24 hours to pick up some traces. And then let's just look at the top one here. Now. I'm now looking at a single execution, a single trace um, within the front end server. And what I can see here is the checkout card transaction. So if I click on that and then go over here to code level analysis, um, I can see here uh, this method or the details info uh, where additional you know, span attributes have been captured and they come to life here when I hover over it. So, Essentially, the developer decided here to capture uh, detailed information about what user essentially uh, this checkout card transaction triggered. And in that case, that comes in actually quite beneficial because it helps me to sort of reach out to the EUs and apologize for, you know, that failed transaction. And maybe, you know, give him a little voucher that he comes back and does more business with me. Um, if we go further down this code execution, we actually also can see that the place order fails, which is then leads me further down in into that tree. And part of the checkout card transaction is actually a currency converter. And if I click here on sort of the call, um, so the application actually runs on a Google Cloud, and I'm sort of calling over uh, to a component hosting on uh, being hosted on AWS. I can see that call you know, comes back with a 500. And if I didn't have the, you know, additional instrumentation through OpenTelemetry, um, I would be blind to the rest here and I could only tell there was a 500 coming back. But remember, and this was the top branch on the previous slide, uh, a foreign component where I don't have any, me, uh, you know, any capabilities to deploy one agent to, but the code luckily was instrumented previously with OpenTelemetry data. And this is essentially where I can go in into the conversion request that goes over to uh, that exchange rate API, and that tells me um, I've run into a rate limit, right? So I now get to the core of the problem, which means essentially I'm you know, calling that specific API too often, 
So a good way to cope with it would be actually implementing, uh, you know, some sort of caching. So that brings me to use case number three, right? So we, we talk about instrumenting um, or, you know, or span ingest through um, the exporter. We talked about the one agent automatically picking up open telemetry data, which was up here. And use case number three is was looking at metrics. And what we also set up here is <clears throat> that Dynatrace collects, and again, I'm going back here into the last uh, seven days for a little bit uh, more beautiful chart and more interesting chart, let me put it that way. Um, so Dynatrace also collects the currency from all those checkout cards transactions through an exporter. Um, and if we actually go into the details here, <clears throat> We can play a little bit with that specific chart and the details. And um, I'm, I'm essentially looking at the currency here. And, you know, I, I could could further. So let me ex actually go in into we are looking at hipster currency. And uh, in my case, I've split that by cur currency. But I also could look in, you know, I I'm, I'm only want to uh, look at successful transactions or unsuccessful transaction. In my case, all the transaction fails, right? I've implemented a bug on purpose here that we have to look at something. So if I'm only looking at, you know, split by currency and all the failing transactions, I'm ending up, uh, should end up actually with the, with the same dashboard here in my case. Let's go back to the dashboard and then look at the AI component that Dynatrace brings to the table and before doing that i would like to uh, briefly make you familiar with the smartscape topology so let me drill in here and the smartscape topology is really you know the key foundation for all the advanced analytics that dynatrace does with the <clears throat> with with the uh, ai component so as said before the smartscape is essentially a real uh, you know, up up to date life model of your application deployment, and now when an anomaly occurs, Dynatrace can take advantage of that to really understand what is the root cause and the impact of uh, that specific situation. So I've prepared a problem over here um, that that we ran into before all the failing uh, checkout or checkout card transactions. And down here in my visual resolution path, now Dynatrace visualizes only those uh, entities that are, you know, related to that specific problem. And if I go up here into the root cause, you know, uh, to those components where I have an increased failure rate, I actually come back to what we looked at before, right? So I see that 500 uh, error, HTTP 500 error. Uh, we precisely ran into that before when, when we did sort of walk through the pure paths. And if we go to the details down here, we can also see the checkout card transaction with 46 failed requests. And I could, you know, follow the same pattern as before, drill into that and realize what the, de you know, what the details of those error were to actually understand I'm hitting the late ra rate limit of the currency conversion. And that already brings me to the end of the demo. So let's go back and conclude our session here real quick. <clears throat> if you want to see more of Dynatrace, go or if you want to try it yourself to be more precise, go to dynatrace.com trial. And it's really easy to get started to roll out the agent on any specific host. It's as easy as one, two, three, essentially download the agent installer execute it or you know run the signal or verify the signature and then install it and um, if you want to use an exporter uh, go to github and find our repository there the link is available and this is you know a way of getting spans and metrics into dynatrace if you don't want to work with the agent or can't work with the agent and then of course uh, there is also you know tailored instrumentation available and roll out uh, for Kubernetes and other platforms through an operator. Um, once you've rolled out the agents, it's really a matter of seconds to minutes that Dynatrace automatically builds a Smartscape model for you. And as you remember, that's the key ingredient for our Davis AI to really provide you with uh, automated analysis based with the 
Dynatrace uh, purpose-built AI. And that brings me to the end of the session. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember, if you like what you saw, go to dynatrace.com trial and enjoy the rest of the conference. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.